Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to draw kiwi fruit. Um, this tutorial is going to be using pastel and coloured pencil, specifically pan pastels, which you can see here to my right, um, and also coloured pencil. Um, so the only other thing you need, um, are other than the pan pastels, which we're going to go through as we go along, is a pastel pencil just to draw the outline. Um, the paper that I'm working on is this um, Faber Castell mixed media pad, which is um, toothy paper. It's got some weight to it, 250 um, grams, which is quite thick. Um, so I've just taken a sheet of that and I've just attached it to my artboard um, so it doesn't move. So if, if I want to, I can just move this around as, as I, I like, which is um, you know, always useful. Right, so what I will do with the draw, uh, the, the um, reference photo, I've taken a reference photo this afternoon, which you're welcome to use. Um, I'll put it, if I can, in the corner of the video so you can see that as we go along. Um, and also I will put the image up on my Facebook page uh, and maybe my Instagram if I can. Yeah, probably my Instagram as well. Um, so you can just um, have that open on your laptop or whatever, um, tablet. And refer back to that as well or you can just you know get a kiwi fruit yourself i've actually got the kiwi fruits in question here we are <laughs> and i've also got my photo up on my screen as well to make sure that i'm you know doing it correctly okay so i'm just using a carbothello um pastel pencil here which is um number 704 which is like a beige color um and i'm just going to start drawing out the basic shape now it's one and a half kiwi fruit so it's just half one on the right which is the green section and then a full one on the left so it's basically just drawing two circle-y sort of shapes to be honest so here we go now don't be like too worried about whether you know if the shape is not circular enough because it's not a perfect circle anyway so and we can always work that out afterwards as well. That's not a problem. And then there's outside of the, the green as well, where the, the, the kiwi fruit is quite furry. Um, so any, like like here, I've made us, I've gone over a bit more than I wanted to. Um, anything af like outside of the line, we can just cover with the fur. That's no problem. And on the second one, And then later on, we'll be adding some shadow. Um, right, okay. Now, I need to get an idea of where the white section is in the centre of the kiwi fruit. Which, so I'm just going to use the pastel pencil extremely lightly to just map that out. And every single kiwi fruit would be different, obviously. Um, and then you've got sort of a pattern all the way there which is also where the seeds are which we will add probably last in the drawing and there's these end sections of the kiwi fruit there Okay, so now we've done that, um, I don't really need to draw anything else here because I'm going to make sure that I will include that over the base colour. So what we'll do now is take a soft tool, which is the uh, soft tool accessory that you get with the £20 um, pound pastel set. So I think either any set that you use, I think they do four of these, um, it comes with a selection of um, tools to go you know, for applying the pan pastel. Um, these are actually clean, I have washed them, but because um, the pan pastel is so pigmented, it stains. So um, even though, even if you wash them, it still has the colour on the actual applicator. Okay. Okay, so we'll just use this uh, medium brown, which is raw umber, and then you just 
pick up the pigment off the pan onto the soft tool and then just apply onto the paper. Now this is a mixed media um, type of paper so it's not anything uh, like pastel matte but it is something that will accept dry media such as um, pastel. So it's always you know an option if you um, don't want to spend too much on something like pastel matte. Pastel mat is very expensive, and if you're just starting out, you know it can um, deter people from using it. But as you can see, this is accepting the pigment, and the soft tools are very good because they um, have nice tips on the sides, so you can angle them to get the colour you want. And um, the Kiwi fruit has actually got like a nice kind of greenish kind of undertone as well because obviously it's green underneath its skin. Um, so it's nice to add a little bit of this yellow, which is bright yellow green. It can't make up its mind if it's yellow or green. There we go. So we just add a little bit of that as well. A little bit of this green, which is chrome oxide green. Chromium, I think it might be ox. It's abbreviated. Adding a little bit of shadow there, just to build up the texture. And you can just dab it on. You don't need a huge amount, but if you find that your soft tool cover is breaking, then you do need to be careful with how much pressure you are applying. Or... Um, how much pigment you're picking up because if it's breaking then you're not using enough pigment. Right, I'm going to go back over with the raw umber. You see there is a little bit of dust, I am blowing the dust away. Um, like with pastel mat for example, um, for those who haven't used pastel mat, it's so adhesive to any dust that you blow away, it's best to just um, bang the uh, the pastel pad or however you know if you're using a board on the table um, or get a kneaded eraser and just pick up the dust because it will it, even if you blow the dust away like this for example that just disappears but um, the, the pastel mat will it will just stick to a, a, another part of the um, the page which is frustrating, but it's okay if you're using the background because then you can, if you're making, you know, use pan pastel or something to make a background. Um, but if you're doing a sort of um, very crisp um, pet portrait or something like that, you have to be so careful. Anyway, back to the kiwi fruit. I deflect. <laughs> anyway, right, so I'm just adding a bit more of that and then I think I'll add some of this yellow ochre just to get to build up some tones in this you just watch what I'm doing just picking up some off the pan and then just patting it about and just watch where the light is in the photo as well you can see that the light comes from the left there um, on the top of this kiwi fruit. Right, okay. And also don't be um, afraid to go over with, use the same soft tool with um, multiple colours. Um, it will just sort of override it. Now I'm going to start with this green colour. Now this green colour isn't exactly right, but what I'm going to do is use this as just a yellowish greenish base. and work around the section where we would have this cream white um, centre part.
You can use the very tip of the soft tool there. So just pick up the pigment right on the edge and then go around the sides of the kiwi fruit because that is what the kiwi fruit looks like. Okay. Um, and we will add some extra definition shortly when I get the coloured pencils out. In the outside section, I'm just going to use some white here and just blend in. Let's move those across a bit. Blend in some white with the, um, the green just to get a lighter green because you can blend pan pastels as well. Don't be afraid to blend them. Just keep dabbing that round the edge. See how quickly the the pan pastel covers a small or even a large area. It's such a an advantageous um, thing about the pan pastels is that you can just cover such a large area with, and I mean you do get like a big sponge with. The, the 20 sets um, but it's great for vast expanses of paper I mean <laughs> you're not there for hours with a colour pencil as therapeutic as that is there we go so I'm just going around the edge with this um, chrome oxide green again there is although you know you look at the kiwi fruit and it's um, green and black and brown um, and white but it's it has got different shades of green in it and pan pastels are such a good um, fun way to um, add an underpainting Just go around the sides like that. The um, the paper I'm using because it's not well, it 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 isn't pa proper pastel paper. It's mixed media paper, so you can use dry media such as pastels on it. Um, it doesn't stick as much, and the layering process is a little more difficult. Um, whereas with pastel mat, it would it would be like, hey, let's take as many layers as no, like, you know, I I can take as many layers as you like. Give me another layer. Give me another layer. But it never ends, really. Well, it does end eventually. But um, pastel mat is far more um, welcoming to layers than other paper, which is why you know people always say, well, can I use a different pa paper instead of? Um, pastel mat because everyone says how good pastel mat is um, but there are attributes to pastel mat which other paper don't possess there we go right okay so I think I'm just going to move on to the white section now okay so we'll just um, pick up using a different um, soft tool. Each, just so you know, each 20 pack of pen pastels comes with two of these, the different applicators. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the raw umber, just a tiny, well tiny is that word, uh, make it off white. So let's make sure that's clear of dust before you go in. And then just add that to the centre.
Now we can make this brighter or give it a more of a green tone and we use the wa uh, wax based, probably wax based, um, colour pencils. Okay, and what I'm also going to do is because there is a sort of white bit around this edge here, I'm just going to take some white and then just go around the edges there. And this just gives you a really nice base layer for how we can add the details in with the coloured pencils shortly. And there's a little tiny bit of light reflection on the left kiwi fruit. But we can make that accentuated um, more accentuated when we start using the colour pencils. Now this paper is kind of um, textured so it's not completely smooth which is another reason why it takes the, um, the pastel. Um, you can't use a smooth paper um, with pan pastels because, um, or really even with pastel pencils either because it, it, it's just got nothing to grip onto. Um, so what I'm going to just do is use the pastel pencil just around the edges there. Now you don't have to get a big set of pastel pencils. Um, just get, you can just get a, a 12 set or um, yeah, just to begin with, 12 set is absolutely fine. Um, or you don't you don't even need to use them at all, to be honest. It's just a personal preference thing for me. Um, just I'll just neaten up the edges because because the paper is textured, it's more tricky to get slightly um, more uh, slick, smooth lines, crisp lines around the edge, but. That's not a problem, you can just sort that out by doing that. Right, so I'm going to choose some coloured pencils now. I'm just going to move these pan pastels out of the way as well. I've got some Prismacolors in here and I've also got a few Polychromos. Um, and the Pablo Cone Dash White. Um, but you can use any pencils, you don't have to worry about which pencils you're using. I mean, this is a beginner's tutorial, so don't be scared by the choice of pencils that I have. I've been collecting pencils for years, you know. Um, but the good thing is I do have a range and I understand that not everyone has every single type of pencil, but as long as you've got the similar, a similar coloured hue of pencil, that's absolutely fine. Right, so what I'm going to be using here um, are a mix. I've just pulled these out, I've just eyeballed the colours. I've just pulled these out to see what sort of colours I think I might like. So I've got the Pablo, oh, oh, I've got a white, I've got um, a light umber, um, a dark brown, they are both Prismacolor, then another Prismacolor in Sandbar Brown. I wonder what a sandbar is. And then another Prismacolor in Goldenrod. And then another Prismacolor in Pale Vermilion. And then I've got a Polychromo in Dark Sapia. And a Polychromo in Bist. Bistra? Bistra. So I just want to make sure that these are nice and sharp. So what I, I normally do is just, you could even hold the pencil up against the, the kiwi fruit and just find the main color. A nice sort of warmish brown. This is my pencil sharpener, by the way. It's the Sawfish Icon, if anyone's wondering. Um, really nice, nice sharp tip, that, isn't it? <laughs> um, right, so what I'm going to do is just start going around the edge. Even the coloured pencils create a little bit of dust, you know? That's completely normal. And it does help with a textured paper such as mixed media paper or watercolour paper. You can use um, past, uh, pan pastels on watercolour pe paper. A lot of people do. A lot of people actually really enjoy using watercolour colour paper with um, coloured pencils as well. Anyway, yeah, so 
because it's textured, it is important to keep the pencil nice and sharp. So you get in all those hills and valleys in the grain of the paper. And just use small strokes to go around the edge. And we'll move on to this part. Now the edge of the kiwi fruit has actually got quite a lot of fur on it. So we might as well just start drawing the fur rather than outlining it because it would be unrealistic if we did a, a straight line around the kiwi fruit. have to add some more shadows to this section first afterwards but I'm going to carry on with this pencil first because I still need to use this for other sections. And then we'll use some lights and some darks and then the white to add tone and contrast to it. Now we need to remember that there's hair all over the kiwi fruit. So just draw some random lines. The, the, there's, there's no kind of rule with drawing hair on a kiwi fruit but make sure they're kind of a bit curly you know and, and sort of draw them from the angle they would grow from the kiwi fruit skin not not just sort of like you're drawing a tally but sort of have some kind of flair to drawing the marks I'm just going to add a little bit of um, this white on this section here. I might sharpen that actually. There we go. Pressing quite hard to get that shine. This is a Pablo white, which is a very good white. You can buy them open stock, so if you are new to coloured pencils, then um, open stock is a good way of getting the odd, you know, one or ten um, that you hear of other people using, which you are uh, impressed by the um, results from. Well, that's, that's a lot of how I've worked with coloured pencils, to be honest. People say, which one should you... Which set should you buy first? Um, but that's that's a really quite a difficult question to answer. I started off with um, a basic Faber Castell set, and I still managed to do some quite nice artwork with it. And then I moved on to Prismacolor, which are wax based, and then I moved on to um, luminance um, and then I got completely addicted to pencils <laughs> and bought some polychromos, not the full set, just a few, um, open stock and then I um, bought a few light fast when they came out as well which were also very nice. Uh, oh and I also got some Pablos. So one or two but it, it is handy to have um, oil based and wax based because I have said this in um, other videos, um, it's just, it depends on what paper you're using and if you want a creamier look or a, a more crisp look. So if you want a crisp look, you know, or for fine lines, you can blend with these as well, but um, Qualichromo is, is what I would recommend. Um, it, it's also a very good start pencil. It is. Right, so now I'm going to move on to another Polychromo, which is the Dark Sapia, just to add a bit of shading. So for shading, just 
do light pressure in small-ish circles. Just look at where you can see the shadow and then see how dark the shadow is. The, sh the shadow is darkest when it's closest to the other half of the kiwi fruit there. And the shadow is coming from this side and the light is coming from this side in the picture. So obviously if the shadow is coming from this side, it's going to be darker in the front of the kiwi fruit. I'm assuming that's the front. We'll pretend that's the front. There we go. Uh, and there's a tiny, tiny bit of shadow along here as well. Okay. And underneath, it is, it is, has got a nice golden colour. So I'm going to use a little bit of golden rod just to add, ooh, good old prisma colour, just to add some more sort of golden hue to it. And as you can see, it's sort of building up the layers nicely there. I'm just drawing over some hairs again. Even just drawing the hairs, you know, you're not having to concern yourself with the base colour because you've already completed that with the pan pastel, which was super quick, wasn't it? It's a weight off. Right, so I'm going to go back in with this dark sapia, which I'm going to sharpen as well. In hindsight, I should have sharpened my pencils before I started the video. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to go over and just draw the back part of this kiwi fruit. Or is it the front part? Who knows? And then just colour in the section with this polychromo uh, fist fistra. And then maybe just do a few more hairs like that. Nice and sharp. Looks good. And maybe add a little bit more shading on top of that just to give that a bit more depth if you need shading then it's just a case of holding the pencil on an angle and then lightly circle motions but just don't press too hard and then we'll go back on this dark sepia just to colour in this section here there we go and then we'll add a few hairs here and there in the dark colour just to give the lighter ones some contrast. Ooh, it's starting to resemble a kiwi fruit, don't you think? How's yours coming along? It'd be nice to see some photos if anybody wants to tag me. My uh, Insta and stuff is on Facebook is down below, so there. If you can tag me, that would be great. It's always nice to hear if people enjoy a video. Even with a like or a comment is even more special. I hope they help. They help the videos on your art journey. Okay, so and a little bit more of this, I think. Uh, Bistra. You can see all the nice underpainting there is reflecting. Let's go on uh, with the golden rod. There's a goldenness underneath here. But like I say, just use a similar colour. You can even get away with having a 24 set of um, coloured pencils. They don't have to be massively expensive ones, they can just be. Um, a good quality basic set. Right, okay, so we'll move on to the next one now. Okay, I'll just go around the edge. Might as well go around with this golden rod still. Just 
small sweeps of the pencil off. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is start on drawing the green sections. Um, so I just need to look at the um, colour which is the sort of out, just outside of the seedy part of the seed, seed part, which is um, a medium sort of green, like a peridot sort of green, um, and then look at the colours around it. So. I think we need, um, this is True Green by Prismacolor and then Pale Sage by Prismacolor um, and then maybe something very slightly darker. Peacock Green, okay. So I'm just gonna give these a sharpen. And so what I will do is, it's basically just testing out if the colour is suitable. Now that colour isn't suitable, I need something darker. Um, let's see what we have here. Maybe even a this green, a uh, moss green. Okay. No, that's still not right. Right, I found one. It's a uh, Cali green. I think this will be okay. So because um, just outside of the seed section is. Um, it's all just sort of very long circles, so just keep your pencil nice and sharp and then just draw some nice circles there, narrow and thin. It doesn't have to be identical to drawing, actually some of them go into the white as well, so we'll just elongate those slightly, that's fine. And just keep blowing away the dust there. Some of them have got like a nice roundness just in the white section. So just try to round off those edges a little bit if you haven't already. Just keep looking straight back at the reference picture as well all the time just in case you've missed something because the eye can tell you that something looks a certain way when it, it doesn't. Which is how um, when making a sketch you can make the sketch slightly off in some ways. There's a really good piece of art um, advice, which was draw what you actually see, not what you think you see. Now this green section here almost blurs into one afterwards. So just go around with the pencil and shade and we we'll use the same uh, Cali Green just around the edges here so just in nice circles around the edge
all the way around and you'll notice that the, the um, kiwi has got sort of I'll just get the white pencil out um, coming from the center like white lines which also make it look juicy and delicious <laughs> So we'll just use the white to draw these lines in. Make sure that pencil is nice and sharp as well. bit around this middle section with the white pencil just in very small circles Okay, so we'll just go. We'll just go into the centre part now, and just go around the edges of that, applying some pressure there. I might actually get a a cream colour. Uh, this is just beige with by Prismacolor but just get a similar one, just to go around the edges there, just to give it a bit more shape. Okay, and now I've got this pale sage and I just want to draw these greener sections in the center just to sort of um, make them a bit more melded together and a bit lighter because they are looking a little bit standout-ish. So we'll just go over them like that. Nice sharp pencil, adding quite a bit of pressure there. Don't be afraid to add the pressure. And as you can see that the um, this mixed media paper has taken the pastel pretty well. those wanting to try pastels, um, yeah, I would definitely try some mixed media paper first. But don't give up on pastel mat. <laughs> we'll use this slightly darker green. This is um, the moss green Prismacolor. You can easily, if you're in the UK, you can easily get Prismacolor now. I don't think a lot of people, places do open stock though, but I'm just going to swap back to the Cali Green just to add these lines, make, try to make them nice and rounded at the, the centre there. Gonna be getting all my friends to draw a kiwi fruit next, <laughs> or a peacock feather, <laughs> or whatever I do a tutorial on next. Okay, right. So we'll just go back over with this um, sage. Is it? Yeah, pale pale sage again, just to sort of make them nice and creamy again. Prismacolor pencils are nice and creamy, by the way, and a light green is a a decent replacement for white there as well so just getting those lines all the way around 
Okay, so I'm going to go back on the bands now just to add the um, a little bit of fur around the edges, just a little bit. But not too much. This is the um, Bistra again, Polychromos. Okay. Right, so I think we are going to be just adding a little bit of um, light reflection with the white. So press hard on the white. Uh, and my tips for um, if you are new to colour pencils is definitely get some good white pencils. Get the Cohen Dash Pablo in white, get the Dermot Drawing in white and get the Luminance in white. Because they will all work better and more um, effectively. On different types of paper because and you will find that you will end up using different types of paper so right so there's lots of sort of lots and lots of right light reflections in the um, kiwi fruit flash which is just can be achieved by doing lots of little dots Do a bit of burnishing there, which is just pressing really hard on the pencil. Which adds the effect of light. Okay, um, and I think we need to uh, add a little bit of... Uh, Shade. So what I'm going to do is get the pampasle back out again and just use this um, raw umber. Just pick up some pampasle. I think I might use the pastel pencil just to draw this shade actually. And then just fill that in. go very good for shadows Okay, and now I need to get a black pencil. Um, yes, so the black, uh, same with the white pencils, the um, black pencils is also imperative to get a decent one. Um, so, depending on what colour pencil brand you end up choosing. Um, always get a black polychroma pencil. Now this is the bit everyone has been waiting for, which is drawing the seeds.
you can see this pencil is oil based and it is layered over multiple layers on a paper which is mixed media, you know, it's not pastel matte and it's working fine, nice and opaque. And make sure you keep turning your pen pencil to uh, keep its sharpness. This pencil is actually getting a bit short. I'm going to have to use a pencil extender soon and splash out on a new one. <laughs> you can get them for about £1.45 open stock if you're in the UK. Some places are a little bit more expensive, I think, depending on where you go. See, sometimes the um, ba the texture of the paper can make the pencil sort of go, woo! <laughs> what am I doing? Have a bit of a wobble, you know, like you do on a Monday morning sometimes. Do I really have to go into work? <laughs> I suppose this year you don't really have to go into work. Some some people can work from home. <laughs> Most people have been working from home. It's a funny old year. Um, right, so almost there with the seeds. See the pencil is still nice and sharp. Just use a little bit of black to add a little bit of shading there as well. Just a tiny bit. can blend oil based pencils such as polychromo with other pencils as well. And we still need some bits of white. This is the kind of drawing which would look nice with um, a bit of brush and pencil white or um, some gouache. But it still achieves the desired effect I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I think we might add a little tiny bit more shading here because that's what it's like on the picture. Okay, so now I've got the shadow and because it's too similar to the colour of the kiwi fruit, I'm going to get some neutral grey and a little bit of the normal black pan pastel and just colour in the shadow to make it more grey so it's different to the colour of the kiwi fruit, which makes all the difference, especially if you take a photograph, because the colour is too similar, it just looks like another kiwi fruit, and we don't want that. And you can just use your finger to soften up the edges. Now if you wanted to, you could actually colour in the outsides, that would be fine. Oh, 
my cat is trying to enter the room. <laughs> She's been asleep for hours, and as soon as I start pressing record, I must come in the room with you. There we go. Right, there we go. So that's more of a difference. But obviously, this is basically just filming for kiwi fruits. So um, if you want to add a background, add a background, and then that will the, the shadow will blend in better. But um, overall, I'm pleased with how this has come out um, please um, let me know if you like the tutorial give me some feedback on it this is the, only the second tutorial I've done um, I hope you enjoyed it or learned something from it if there's something else you'd like me to cover in another tutorial please let me know please subscribe to my YouTube or like my Facebook page give me some feedback that would be great thank you <laughs> see you soon for the next one